Hi there, Reject Nation. I'm Greg Alba. I'm John Humphrey. We're going to watch the trailer for the Paul Rudd TV show, Living with Paul Rudd. Uh, <laughs> no, Living with yourself. Living with yourself. Netflix series. I'm excited to check this out. Paul Rudd could use a TV show, his movie career. What's he done lately? Yeah. G guys, since it's a TV show, I'm gonna shout this out. You should check out our Patreon page. Over there we do weekly Q and A's and we do TV show reaction stream alongs for many shows where you can sync up. Those are Cobra Kai season two, Haunting of Hill House season one, Gotham, Stranger Things season three, Agents of Shield. And there are several shows where we do reaction highlights included as well as the option to do a stream along. Those are Attack on Titan, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, My Hero Academia movie included as well. Death Note, Code Geass, One Punch Man, Hunter Hunter, and Supernatural. Anywho, let's get to this, shall we? You're welcome. The path of life brings us many troubles. Talk, sadness, humiliation. Cup Happy Spa will rebuild your DNA better than ever. A better you, the best you can be. That's what I want. Okay. How do you feel? Happy. <laughs> ah. No, 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 it's fine. I woke up in a spa, went to work, and came home. I woke up in a grave, and then I walked for six hours Ooh. to find whatever the fuck you are. No, there's two me's. But there's one life. So, what do you suggest we do? <sighs> Drink each other off. There you go. It's not gay. It's <laughs> a brain tumor. An operable, I hope. He's better than me in everything. With work, with Kate. Are you seriously jealous of you? <laughs> I know karate. Not unless you learned it since yesterday morning, you don't. <laughs> Do you know a place that sells guns? Oh, no. Oh How can you be sure that you are you? <laughs> You're a monster. Like Dr. Jekyll. Dr. Jekyll was the same one. You mean Mr. Hyde. You should pick up a book sometime. <laughs> it's like an evil version of multiplicity. Yeah. Or, I'm excited or, for this. Or like that Rick and Morty episode where they go to the spa to get their toxic sides removed and then there are functional sides and the toxic sides, you know, as two separate characters. I do kind know that episode. exactly like what this is. <laughs> well, this looks like a fun show. I'm not sure if I do a reaction to it. it looks... This is the kind of show I would definitely probably binge watch on a weekend. It almost reminded me of Friends from College and its temperament of humor in a way. Okay. Well, you know, because like Friends from College has that nothing is very lighthearted, everything is dysfunctional. You know, yeah, and... well, I, I feel like this is going to go down a significantly darker path <laughs> than that show. That's fair. Well, yeah. I mean, it looks like that clone Paul Rudd is going to want to try to take over not clone, original Paul Rudd yeah. as the journey progresses. Like, they were hinting at a lot of violence to come. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think the trailer did a really good job at selling me on, okay, this kind of feels like a Judd Apatow movie in a way, like in yeah, the beginning yeah. part of this. Yeah, I was thinking of This Is 40 <laughs> when I was yeah. watching it. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, I've seen Paul Rudd do this role before. Dude, middle-aged. Not happy Not with happy. his life, takes it out with a lot of sarcasm. Mm. I've seen that done. And then when it had, uh, you know, the hook of it revealed, I was like, okay, this is gonna be like some weird slice of life sci fi. Oh no, it's gonna be like a weird thriller, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah. I like those kind of clone tales. Any, I've seen many shows include that kind of clone tale. I've actually been watching Gotham season three recently, and that's in there as well. And then I've seen so many classic clone movies. Oh, yeah. And this feels like a different take of it because of the many explorations you could do with it. It's not just some temporary gimmick, it is like a focus, and it's not. Not going for like 
big high thrills movie concept. It seems like you can actually take the time to have identity exploration mm -hmm. throughout the whole course of a season while including some of that classic. Because this is from a guy who like produced The Daily Show and stuff, the creator of this. Okay, okay. And then you know you have Paul Rudd's comedic sensibilities being infused as well. And all that political humor. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I also really like when actors give themselves the challenge of playing two people. Yeah. You know, Gemini Man. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Challenge of watching actors do that because they don't really have anyone to play off of. And a lot of the times when you're doing a scene, so much of how you're doing your delivery is based off of how you're reacting and feeling and receiving what your partner is giving you. Yeah. And he just has to do it all purely off imagination. So it's a fun exercise for VFX artists and it's a fun exercise for editors as well because you're yeah. taking multiple different takes and you're trying to make it mesh and flow well. Yeah, I would and love to be a fly on the wall for that because I have to imagine that part of the time you're working with a stand-in, you know, for the parts where they're actually doing over the shoulders or whatever. But yeah, in certain moments, to have to imagine not only something outside of your own reality, but also that's another version of you has to be sort of an interestingly trippy thing to do because you almost have to develop two characters as yeah. the actor, yeah. This also yeah. looks like the kind of show that would put me on edge. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because I'm sure it's going to be a, a lot less sci-fi in its overall themes. You know, yeah. it's probably going to have, or at least one would hope it has some poignant things to say about the duality of human nature. Yeah, know? it feels a little bit like a Charlie Kaufman show. Just a little you bit. You crash it's not Kaufman as, into Apatow. Yeah, it's not as, know. like, trippy, weird. At least that's what the, the trailer is not communicating that to me. It, yeah, it, the sci-fi looks very low to the ground. I feel like as the clone is starting to ruin his life mm. because it's going to be that thing where everything's kind of great sort of wondrous I imagine eventually it's going to start taking this very dark path and I think once the clone really starts to intervene with uh, our main character's personal life I'm just going to be on edge and this is this is how Netflix gets you with a binge model. That's when you start like, just freaking, oh, you gotta know what happens next. They always end it. They don't have like these complete episodes. They just end in the middle of a scene. And you're like, I gotta I gotta start up the next episode yeah, <laughs> to yeah. see the next scene. They're good at that. And they're also good at cutting these series trailers to look like movies. Because a lot of times from other networks, I'll see a, a trailer for a show. And I'm like, okay, yeah, this looks like a bunch of different moments from a bunch of random places. But this looks contained in the way a movie does. And I have to imagine that in a way that almost contributes to the bingeability. All right, so I guess my question that I have with watching the show is because, okay, so he's replaced. Clone is the one that everyone seems to be loving. Yeah. What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> What's like original Paul Rudd doing this whole time? Are they like swapping in and out once in a while? Or yeah, uh, that's like, uh, it just seems like he's stalking his clone <laughs> the whole time. Because I feel like normally the flip scenario is there's a clone and then the original Paul Rudd's trying to live a life but this clone's like following him around. Yeah. Right, yeah. that's it. usually what it is. So I like the, like the island I like, format. Yeah, I like the twist on this that like mm -hmm. the clone has just replaced him and he's kind of just watching this happen. Yeah, it's just happy functional Paul Rudd has replaced <laughs> yeah. sad dysfunctional but Paul Rudd. But what is sad dysfunctional Paul Rudd doing the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it no. makes me wonder whether we're going to see this show in a sort of two plot lines parallel kind of way, or whether it's going to hand off with the spa treatment and then, you know, have basically original Paul Rudd intervene on their life, and maybe they'll have some kind of clandestine relationship or something, or some switch in and out. I imagine that happy Paul Rudd is probably secretly going to be a little evil. By the, unless they want to make this be. like a whole. This reads more like limited series, mini series to me than it does at the moment. Yeah. Read as like something they want to keep for seasons on end because if it is mini series, I'd imagine that Happy Paul Rudd is really like, well, no, I got to get rid of the old one now. He's maybe. really evil. But hey, maybe because uh, I mean, dysfunctional Paul Rudd's trying to like ax him at the beginning, so right. maybe functional Paul Rudd will come up with a healthy solution to this problem. <laughs> well, guys, are you excited to go check out Living with Yourself? Make a comment down below if you will be binging this. Mm -hmm. You guys can subscribe to The Real Rejects, click that notification bell, check us on Patreon for all those goodies that I mentioned earlier. And before we wrap this up, I would like to give a patron of the day shout out to a man named Matt Beer. Matt Beer, you dip in and out of our lives like nobody's business. Sometimes you're with us, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're like, hey, I gotta take a break, and then you come back and then you overpledge, and the overpledge is usually just okay with us. But then I worry mm. about you, man. John, tie this into living with yourself. You know, Matt, I mean, the thing is, you're gonna start to loathe yourself if you don't budget these things right, and then pretty soon, you're gonna find yourself clone swapped out with a better version of you that you're gonna resent, 
and then you're probably gonna try and kill that clone of yourself, which will probably open up a rift in space time and kill the both of you. So chill out and just learn to budget your Patreon support higher, more, more. That like this is all you should be paying for. It's a way to get to our hearts, man. Mm -hmm. And happiness. It's all about money. You spending it. I think we did it. We did it.